Okay, so last week, if you were here, we've learned how to make this little beauty here, which is the easy puff paste tray. And let me tell you, I've been going crazy with that thing. I've been using it in all kinds of recipes. So as promised this week, we're going to learn how to use this to make a recipe because knowing how to make a puff pastry is great, but you know, you need to know what to do with it. So very simple recipe. It's called the feuilleté jambon fromage, but we're going to make a tourte, a bit like a PTV. So the whole process is going to be two circle, two disc of pastry, one at the bottom, and then we're going to put on top ham, bechamel sauce, cheese, repeat the process, little layers like that, and then cover the whole lot with another piece of puff pastry. And this, when it's cooking in the oven, when you cut it open, you've got that kind of creamy, cheesy, hammy thing. Can't explain? You have to see it for yourself. So let's do it. Let's start. So as always, let's talk mise en place and food preparation for that recipe. So how is this recipe made? It is a white sauce, a bechamel, a simple bechamel with ham and cheese. And so what not to be loved? <laughs> because when you hear this three ingredients, it's like, yes. So preparation wise, I've got slices of ham, two or three slices of ham, quite thick. You don't want them too thin. I've got the flour and butter here for the bechamel, some nutmeg, salt and pepper. We've got the milk behind here and some cheese. The cheese can be anything you want. Actually, it can be Conte cheese, cheddar. You could even use blue cheese if you really wanted to. So the first thing we're going to do here is to prepare the bechamel because it's going to be a thick version and it has to cool down and be nice and solid before we can use it. So let's do that first. So the first thing we're going to do here is to make the bechamel sauce. It's also called commonly the white sauce. If you, if you don't know what the bechamel is, it is basically a mix of butter and flour with milk and some seasoning. So for all the students on the school, I'm sure you know already how to make the bechamel. We've seen this multiple times. And reminder, today we are making the fast bechamel, which means we're going to turn the heat on. Okay. And we're going to start by melting the butter. And we're going to use a technique that uses a warm roux with cold milk. So for our easy bechamel here, we're going to start on medium heat. You melt all the butter first. As soon as the butter is melted, you add all of the flour. Now all the ingredients will be listed in the video description. Immediately you mix everything together. You make a nice compound, okay, it's a nice little paste. And then we're going to reduce the heat. And we're going to leave this to cook for two minutes. This is called making a white roux. Perfect, so my two minutes are up. As you can see, my roux has been cooking nicely. And now we're going to be adding the milk. So when you do this, make sure your heat is on the very, very the lowest of the lowest setting, or alternatively, you can turn it off totally to avoid clumping. And now we're going to start to add the milk. It's cold, OK? And we're going to mix it in. So why are we using that technique today of not infusing the milk with flavor? Because the bechamel is going to be cooking with cheese and ham, which is going to further enhance the taste of the bechamel. In this scenario, you can use a simple bechamel like this with a simple salt, pepper, nutmeg. OK, so first we dilute and we add the rest. Make sure there's no clumps and everything is dissolved. And then we raise the heat to medium to medium low. And we will keep on stirring for a few minutes until it thickens. If you want to win some time while it's warming up, you can season your bechamel, a bit of pepper, good amount of salt and a grating of nutmeg. So don't be too heavy handed with the nutmeg, but you can add some. That's, that's up to you. It's optional. You don't have to put it. Perfect. Back to my whisk. Now it is very important when you make a bechamel like this to not use a heat that is too high. And the reason for that is that if the, the heat is too high, it's going to solidify very, very quickly. That's going to create clumps. If you go very slow, with the heat on medium to medium low, you have time for the meal to warm up. And as you whisk, everything incorporates and you get a nice kind of, you know, it's liquid, it starts to get thick, but you don't have these massive blocks of bechamel everywhere. You don't want that. So don't rush things. Huh? All right. So as you can see, it starts to boil. I'm reducing my heat. Good whisking. And you're going to leave it like this to boil very slightly for about two minutes. But before then, you're going to taste your preparation. This is super important. Everything you make, just taste it. You see? That likes a bit of salt. A bit of salt. 
and that's it. All right, so that's ready. This is the, cons the consistency I've got here, as you can see. It is quite thick. Now, because we're making a tour that everything is cold, we got the pastry, the ham is cold, the cheese, you cannot use it warm, okay? So we're gonna have to leave this to cool down. So I'm gonna reserve it in a little tray and put it in the fridge. So what do we mean all the time by reserving that term? Oh, I'm gonna reserve something. It's not a reservation at the hotel. It's basically to put something away into another container. In this scenario, we're using a large tray because it's gonna favorize the cooling down of the bechamel. See, by spreading on a cold tray like this, on a thin surface, it's gonna cool in the fridge in no time. And that's what we want. Now to finish, anytime you put something in the fridge that's got a tendency to uh, you know, form a crust on top, like a pastry cream or bechamel, you take a film and you're gonna film this and it has to touch the bechamel everywhere, okay? So you're not gonna end up with a horrible kind of crust when you're gonna take it out. Rolling the dough is nothing new. It's the same as you would do all the time. So you're gonna be washing your hand, as always, you're gonna washing, wash the bench where you, you know, your station here. And you're gonna sprinkle, of course, the flour on the bench like we did last time you know, to prepare the area and boom. Okay, some of you like to put the flour on the rolling pin. You can do that as well. And we're gonna lay this Basically, we're gonna make a thin layer, about three to four milliliters in size, okay? And make sure, as well, you're gonna take the pastry out of the fridge before you start rolling, you see? You see, mine was just out not long ago, and it's, you know, there's some resistance. So keep this in mind. And we're gonna be rolling and rolling and rolling. Now I'm all done, not a perfect rectangle or anything like that, but I want to show you, this is the type of thickness we need. And you can see it's like a coin. Now for the disc, basically, you take a plate or anything of the right size, okay? It can't exceed that, that size, I, I tell you. And you're gonna go around, basically around the door like this, and you're just gonna cut everything, okay? Now for the second one, you want to have a little extra. So it doesn't matter if it's not totally, totally round, okay? We're gonna try to go as much as we can without touching the other one. You see, I'm gonna go around, and I'm gonna add a little bit, and you will see why afterwards. You need a little bit extra. So as you can see, lots of off-cut. This is me being lazy. You could cut the dough in two kind of perfect size and make circles that just fits there, but you know, I'm always a bit lazy. So basically I'm gonna you know, take that off. I'll reuse it for something else. And I'm gonna reserve my, uh, my large disc on a plate, put it in the fridge. I'm gonna work with that one. Now the other one, we're gonna put it straight on that baking tray. So I'm putting a bit of flour in there. You want to be kind of you know, gentle with the thing. Try not to bruise it too much and boom. We now have all the ingredients we need and we can start to build our little recipe here, which is the feuilleté au jambon et au fromage. So we're gonna have that disc of pastry and of course we're gonna have the grated cheese. The bechamel is now cold. It's got a nice texture. We've got the ham and I've got an egg wash on here, which is just an egg with a bit of salt. We're gonna use two actually stick both of the dough, the top and the bottom together. And I'm saying this because this is one of the most important rule and one of the most annoying thing that can happen. And this is what you need to master, not only for that recipe, for every single recipe you're gonna make with that system with the bottom disc like this and then the cover on top. Once we're gonna be putting the garnish on there, we're not covering the whole thing like an apple tart, right? You're gonna have to leave an edge with nothing, usually, about a quarter of an inch, about two centimeters wide with nothing. That space is gonna be used after when we're gonna put the top part and we're gonna be able to seal totally the outside. If it's not sealed properly, the cream or anything you put in it will spill out. And this is the big challenge when you make that recipe. The rest is simple, okay? So let's do it. Right, so don't stress about the whole thing. It is actually quite straightforward. So I've cut roughly my ham here. And the layer is gonna be like this. We're gonna have ham, then we're gonna have the bechamel, and then we're gonna have cheese. Now for the bechamel, a good tablespoon, and all what you're gonna do, you take your spatula, and you're gonna basically, same thing, you're gonna add some. Don't overdo it, don't overdo it, very important. And that's about it. A little layer, and we're gonna add then some cheese. 
But the most important is to always, you see that piece of cheese that fell down here? We don't want that. So I'm gonna brush it off, I'm gonna make sure it's all there. And then I'm gonna continue with the other layer. And you're gonna repeat the whole process always the same. So I'm starting with the ham again, then the bechamel, then the cheese. And now for the egg wash. So you put your pastry brush in the egg without having too much of it. And like a painter, you're gonna basically add just enough egg. You don't want to have too much, it's gonna act like as a glue, okay? Perfect. So now I'm gonna take my other piece of pastry that I had, okay? And I'm gonna add this thing right on top there, you see? And what we're gonna do, this is where we're gonna be able with our hand to warm up the whole thing. And we're gonna make that shape, that little kind of cake kind of shape. We're making a circle. So you use your hand like this and you join. This is where we had that glue there, you see? So it's, it's like a, a UFO a little bit, like a little bit a spaceship we're building. So that's another view. So remember, with your hands, you go like that and you make that circle. What you want to see, it is that mark here that is sealed. The two pieces of dough are sealed. And trust me, this is a bit of a long-winded explanation, but once you get this, this is the secret to this thing. If you manage to seal this properly, it's easy peasy. So what we're gonna do here is to just cut just the excess like this. I'm gonna turn around, not going deep, and I'm gonna remove the excess to make sure everything is nicely sealed and cut, okay? Now to finish up, I'm new to this kind of uh, techniques, but you can use the back of the knife and you tuck the dough inside a bit more. And you're gonna go very slow and continue like this. Whew. Once you've done this, basically you can breathe again. Oxygen, yes. And what we're gonna do here, basically we're gonna take some egg wash again, which is that egg, not too much. And we're gonna brush everything and cover it. And that's gonna give that nice kind of color that's really attractive. Okay, the final step is basically decoration. So I'm not super good at it, but you can kind of use the back of a knife and you're gonna make some shapes like this. You rotate and you're gonna go around. You can make whatever you want, be creative, you know, it's fun. Just make or try to make something that looks decent. And yes, we are done. Look at this mission achieved. This little pie is ready to go in the oven. Well, it's not exactly the best drawing, but we'll see how it's uh, gonna go. So the oven, 180 degrees Celsius. It has to be preheated before. We're gonna put this in the oven. I'm using a fan forced oven and we're gonna be cooking this for 30 minutes. And when it's done, we'll share the result together. It is just out of the oven and you can surely see something here on the side. So I'm gonna try to bring it over here. Good news, it really puffed, as I said with that puff pastry it would, and it didn't leak out. And the other good news is that with that recipe it says, has to be consumed straight away, which I'm gonna do right now. It's not huge, and we'll talk about this after, but let me try to... Ooh, I can feel the ham, oh, and the cream. Oh gee, look at that. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Smoky, look at that. Ooh, I think it's, I think, oh, look at that. It is creamy as, what hot. Let's try it out. I've refocused because you need to see this. I don't know what to focus on. I'm so excited because this look really luscious. Welcome to creamy land. So we've got these layers, look at this. So the bichelam made it hot with the cheese, the ham, the little sandwich is the color under. And you've got that kind of puffy texture. And look at this, it's crumbs, you know. So you've got the puff pastry effect, plus the cheese, the bechamel, everything like a little sandwich. So I'm gonna, I have to wait a little bit. I'm gonna burn myself if I eat this straight off, but. Yep. Come here, little slice for me. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm. Uh, I mean, cheese, white sauce, ham, with that puff pastry there, kangaroo. That thing is creamy as creamy. I wanted to grab with my hand, but look what happened. 
The strings of cheese, it's stringy as well. Oh, stringy cheese. I'm really lost for words. First off, that puff pastry that I gave you, I mean, look at the results you're getting. This is what I'm seeing on books. And you can use that same technique with the dough here to fill this with anything you want. You can use meat, fillet of meat, you can use, you know, pigeon, mince meat, vegetables, mushrooms, anything you want, mixed with everything you, you want, and you're gonna get something as delicious as this. This is the basic of the basic recipe when it comes to these kinds of stuff in French cooking. So imagine the rest. <laughs> imagine the rest. <laughs> Let's get ready for some more. But anyway, that's the recipe of the week. I hope you like it. What's important to remember is the sealing of the pie here, the two, like the two disc of dough, that is gonna make your life easier. Now, I've been a bit lazy. I could have kind of separated the dough in two and you could have made a larger pie with the 500 grams, but I'll leave that up to you and to challenge yourself and make something more accurate, bigger, and use some filling. So as always, if you have any question, use the comment section, but I want to see your pictures on Instagram, absolutely, with the puff pastry, with this kind of technique, and come up with your idea because this is too good to miss, okay? So I will leave this with this beautiful picture on the screen and you can eat this of course with a nice wine. I think a white wine would be good but you can take a nice light burgundy red. It will work as well. I'll see you all next time. Take care all and eat and cook as much as you can. Take care.